this is Brian David Marshall coming to you from the Tournament Center at Pro Tour Amsterdam. I'm here with, uh, I guess you are labeled with the rogue deck builder thing now. I'm attached. Conley I'm Woods. typecast these days. <laughs> typecast. Uh, we're on day two of the Pro Tour. Conley went 5-0 in uh, New Extended. Right, so we had a conversation before the tournament. We did, a, we did a little round table where we talked about the New Extended format, talked about the challenges for a rogue deck builder. We talked about the challenges to Frank Karsten as a deck finisher or polisher. Yeah, and both of you were talking about the idea of not having enough information to like ply your trade and i think it's kind of interesting that you ended up with a deck that we've been calling midnight special <laughs> tell, tell us about the origins of this deck uh basically i mean we showed up on thursday uh for registration and whatnot uh walked around asked the dealers they were all sold out of trefo carbingers living ends everything for ad nauseum and i was like well we we kind of knew what the metagame was uh roughly like we knew 10 or so of the 30 decks, and then we knew there was going to be all kinds of outliers, and then a bunch of decks that just played, you know, Punishing Fire, Grove of the Burn Willows, no matter what shell it went in, everything like that. Um, so we showed up, talked to the dealers, talked to the Channel Fireball crew, and they handed me a Dorn list that they wanted me to play, um, that, like, Brad's playing, everyone else is playing. Um, but it didn't look too good to me, and I fiddled with it a little bit, but I gave up. Went back to the hotel at, like, 9.30 or 10 o'clock at night, uh, built about three decks. They all stunk. <laughs> and I was like, screw it, I'm just, you know, going to try to metagame, play these cards that specifically attack the decks that I know are going to be there um, with enough generic cards that, like, I'm still going to be good. You know, neither Reliquary is what's not, like, that card's going to be good no matter what matchup you're in. Um, but, like, things like Meddling Mage, for instance. Sure. Um, not necessarily a card the scene plays since it was reprinted, so. Right, so what you essentially ended up with was a Bant deck. Yeah, a Bant deck. So I mean, all the best answers are just in these colors. So you, you mentioned already, you mentioned Knight of the Reliquary over here. You know, you're pairing that, the green and white there, you're pairing with, like, the blue of Jace the Mind Sculptor. Gotta have Jace these days if you're running blue. That's the way it works. How, uh, how about Vendillion Click? This is a card that's all play in, in old extended. Quite, yeah, yeah, quite, yeah. A, quite a bit. It's quite good. I mean, it's really good against the combo decks. Um, it's fine against Doran. It kills their Elspeth, which is important. That's probably the scariest card out of them is Elspeth. Uh, in trades with, like, Treetop Village and Trefo Carbinger when they're, like, randomly attacking with it and Tarmogoyce. I mean, I killed everything from, you know, everything out of them yesterday um, with Vendillion Click, which you don't think would happen because with Doran down, it's a 1-1. But your main goal is to keep Doran off the table. Um, but, yeah, Vendillion Click's a uh, pretty good answer, pretty good against the control decks, too. Um, Mentally Mage is probably the techiest main deck card, I would say. Um, just all around good. It gives you another two drop. And actually let me skimp on my Tarmogoyf a little bit. <laughs> yeah, so th I think this is one of the interesting little points of this deck is that you only have three Tarmogoyfs and then we have a, a fourth Rocks Warmonk there. And now, like normally you would be like, oh, he didn't have four Tarmogoyfs, yeah. so he played a Rocks Warmonk, but this is very deliberate, right? Yeah, yeah, I, I got the fourth Tarmogoyf. I actually gave it back to Matt Sperling. Um, the, the night before, built a deck and then kind of did some mental playtesting, if you will, in my head and ran through matchups. Who are you, Getty Al? <laughs> figured it, figured it, I mean, I, I literally had not played a game with it until day one of the first round. Um, but did some mental playtesting, decided that, like, Tarmogoyf, I only have instant uh, creature, land, and planeswalker in this deck, and only three planeswalkers at that. So my Tarmogoyf really rely on my opponent's spells, and I don't want to be getting thought seized and and killed in co by combo decks in order for my Tarmogoyf to be big. So, like, Tarmogoyf's still good that it fills the two-drop slot, but we really want to be playing a Noble Hierarch on turn one anyway and then going straight into three. So Tarmogoyf's more for, like, the situations where that doesn't happen or the late game, so you don't need four in this deck. And instead, I was able to add a Rocks War Monk, which is perfect because I was one sideboard sh slot short of being able to play all four in the sideboard. Um, okay. So it let me, you know, add the one in the main deck and then run the three others in the sideboard, so it worked out pretty well. Okay, well, that's looking at the Planeswalkers and the Creatures. Let's talk about some of the instants that you mentioned. Uh, we'll start over here with the eponymous uh, Bat Charm. I think it's one of the best cards in the format, to be honest. You're you're blowing up Coalition Relics, you're countering Ad Nauseam, you're putting uh, Dorns on the bottom of their library. Pretty much just, you know, Swiss pocket knife of the of the format. And then uh, Path to Exile? Yeah, only can fit three in. Uh, one in four Bat Charms just because it's more versatile, but uh, Path is quite good still. Um, you don't mind using it on turn two and three in this format just because your opponents come out of the gate so fast that even if you do give them an extra land, they don't have much gas left in their tank, so... And then uh, we have a, a package of uh, six pieces of counter magic here between the mana leaks and the two cryptic commands. Yep, really helps against uh, you know the control decks, the five color and the Grixis control decks, and the combo decks. Um, I wasn't taking mana leak out against Storm, but I decided last round to take it out on the draw just because of the little so I took two of them out of left two in. Um, but yeah, it's been uh, been pretty good. Um, the shakiest part of this deck by far is the mana base, just because I worked it, messed with some numbers, changed it about ten times, but you 
without playing the deck, you're really never going to be able to get a perfect. Which is interesting because it seems to me like everyone's just like, did you? How did you resist the temptation to cram Punishing Fire Grove of the Burnwells? That is, there is no way that is fitting <laughs> in this deck. Zero chance. So, so talk to us about the land that we have here. Here, here's your basics. We see two plains, two islands, three forests. Yeah. How I'll, do you come up to these numbers? Um, I mean, it basically dealt with the fetch lands. I only was able to fit five fetch lands. I had Shield. seven for a while. Four Mr. Reinforce, of course, and then one Verdant Catacombs. That was at two for a while. Um, only could fit 25 lands in the deck, though, so it didn't quite work out. Uh, I do have Horizon Canopy Over, which is a makeshift fetch land when you have uh, when you have Night of the Reliquary out, and it was just all around better. Lets you cast turn one Noble Hierarch still, which is important. Um, one of each of the creature lands. Uh, one. And one? <laughs> yeah, you just grab them with your Night of the Reliquary. Treetop Village really doesn't do much in this deck because the three damage is a big deal, but those having evasion or being able to block a Vendillion Click or whatnot is pretty big. And then uh, one of each pain land. <laughs> <laughs> Again, uh, helping out with the Noble Hierarchs and uh, just giving you some guaranteed mana. Uh, Brushland was a third Horizon Canopy for a while, but I decided I didn't want to take that much damage. Uh, had two Attacar Waste, but ended up making it a Glacial Fortress. And then our kind of two specialty lands are the one Tectonic Edge and one Sejiri Step. All right, well, let's talk through the sideboard real quickly. You see... Uh... Added that in there over the fourth path. It's still good against Storm, but also good against Pyromancer Ascension and Mono Red and whatnot. So... Uh, it's basically that or path. Either one's fine, I think. Okay, wait, you already mentioned the three war monks. Three rocks, war monks. What, what do you bring this in against? Been bringing it against Doran, bringing it in against Mono Red, bringing it in against the White Weenie decks. Basically, any creature deck. Okay, and then uh, as, big uh, four stags. They come in against Control, Fairies, Doran. I mean, they're pretty versatile. They almost made the main deck, but not quite. I had to add the milling mages. Okay, and then uh, one Bajuka Bog, pretty self-explanatory. Pretty, pretty staple with neither Reliquary. You're able deck. to just fetch that up at instant speed. Yep. To rule of law. Good against both combo decks, and or all three combo decks. Good against Pyromancer Ascension, too. So. Okay. This is a card that I was really excited to see. Uh, <laughs> I had more of them. It's basically the fifth Meddling Mage. It counters Punishing Fire, but it also is good against the combo deck, so it's better than the third rule of law in general. Right. And so this in play, you can just, for every blue you have, you can just, just continually count, count yeah. to counter uh, Punishing Fire. Couple of negates against Control, combo again. Pretty self explanatory. And then, and then uh, we had one slot left, and I wanted it for fairies, and I faced it twice, so that's good, and I got the one Cloud Thresher in there. Uh, it also comes in against the, the slower control decks, just having an instant speed threat is a pretty big deal. Is that or Teferi? Um, so it was a toss-up between the two. Okay, as you can see, the, the, the feature matches are filling in around us. <laughs> yeah, we're, you, you've got a round that you I'm, have to it, go yeah. play in. Uh, you're off to an X and 3 start. Yep. You, you've I, got I, to, I owe 3 to draft, unfortunately. It was not, not fun times. But well, I won my last constructed round. I'm trying to get back on the up and up. Still undefeated and constructed. Undefeated and constructed, yeah. Okay. Well, good luck the rest of the way, Conley. For Conley Woods, this is Brian David Marshall signing off from the Tournament Center at Pro Tour Amsterdam.